Hello all, Dan from DroneBlog.com here. In today's video, we'll discuss the various safety features of the Air 3 and show how to set these options in DJI Fly. Feel free to use the chapters to skip to the areas of the walkthrough that pertain to you. Now to access and modify the safety features of the Air 3, you'll need to be in the Safety tab making the necessary adjustments. To access the Safety tab, both the Air 3 and DJI RC2 or RCN2 will need to be powered on and connected to the DJI Fly app. In the Camera View screen, go into the Fly app menu or options by tapping the three dots in the upper right hand corner. You'll want to be in the Safety tab. If for some reason you're in another tab, simply press the Safety tab. The first area we'll be looking at is the Flight Assistance options. These include obstacle avoidance actions, bypass actions, and display radar map. The obstacle avoidance action is broken into three separate options and determines the behavior of the Air 3 when obstacles are detected. Before flying, you'll want to define what the Air 3 will do once it approaches an obstacle. Now these available options are bypass, and when enabled and controlling the Air 3, the Air 3 will automatically go around detectable obstacles. If there's no available way to do so, the Air 3 will then hover until action can be taken by you. Brake. When the brake action is enabled, the Air 3 will automatically stop and hover when encountering obstacles. You will then be able to determine the best course of action to take. And the last option is off. This of course turns off all obstacle avoidance systems. With this action, the Air 3 can run into obstacles in the environment. Some drone pilots, like myself, use this option when flying in tight spaces. The bypass actions dictate how the Air 3 behaves when bypassing obstacles. We have normal, and here the Air 3 will look for objects and obstacles before reaching them, staying a safe distance from the obstacles. Then there's nifty. This is sort of like cinema mode for the bypass action. When enabled, the Air 3 will avoid obstacles with more laid back and smooth movements. However, this bypass option has a higher chance of colliding with obstacles. The next option is display radar map. The radar map, which of course can be toggled on and off, is an on-screen aid used to quickly alert you to how close the Air 3 is to objects, and this is done visually through the use of the colors orange or red, depending on how close the drone is to an object. When close to an object, the radar turns orange and gradually turns to red as the Air 3 flies closer and closer to an object. The radar map is particularly useful for those who turn off all obstacle avoidance and fly close to objects in the environment or fly through tight areas and spaces. At the bare minimum, the radar map will give a visual warning of obstacles. We'll now look at Return to Home, or RTH. RTH options will return the Air 3 to the recorded home point without any additional input from you. Now in this section, you'll want to set the options for the advanced RTH. And there are two settings available for advanced RTH, these being optimal and preset. When in optimal advanced RTH, the Air 3 plans the best route for it to get home, regardless of any RTH height options previously input. It'll adjust its height to get above, below, or around any type of obstacles or interference signal in the area that could disrupt a successful RTH. With the optimal setting chosen, the Air 3 will use the straightest and direct route to RTH to save on battery power, which in turn increases the amount of time the Air 3 can fly. Now this may possibly even save the Air 3 if the batteries are low. If it's too dark for the Air 3's vision sensors, the Air 3 will default to a variation of preset mode with preset altitude options, which we'll look at. Preset Advanced RTH. In this mode, the Air 3 will return home at the preset height. As a rule of thumb, I set my auto return to height altitude 30 feet or so above the highest obstacle wherever I might be flying for the day. 
If the Air 3 is in optimal advanced RTH when the lighting conditions are too poor for the Air 3's vision system to see its way home, the auto RTH height would then be used. We'll now look at the auto RTH altitude. This is actually very important to set. The reason is that in the event of an emergency, you'll want the Air 3 to have sufficient height when returning home. As a rule of thumb, it's always good to set your return to home height a fair bit higher than the tallest obstruction in your area. Now, some simply set their RTH altitude to the maximum flight ceiling, which in the United States is 400 feet, and then just go. But this could be dangerous if the Air 3 is returning home and there are low flying aircraft in the vicinity. Now we'll look at updating the home point. Updating the home point allows you to change your home point from where it was automatically set in the DJI Fly app upon acquiring a GPS signal, and then you can set it to where you want it. This is especially useful if you find yourself moving from one location to another rapidly while flying, perhaps when on a boat or another moving object. The home point can be moved once the drone is in the air and has a full GPS lock. So to update the home point, while the Air 3 is in the air, press the arrow to the right of the update home point. A map of your immediate location will populate the center of the screen. Drag the screen until the yellow H moves to your new desired home point location. When done, simply press OK and the new home point will be updated. If you'd like to set the home point back to where it was, you simply just reverse these steps. You can also set the home point to be where the remote controller is currently located. Now one scenario for this of course would be when covering areas rapidly while in a vehicle or a boat. So to update the home point to the remote controller, while in the update home point map screen, tap the remote controller icon. Now the home point will be set to the exact location where the RC is currently. We'll look a little at the AR settings. The Air 3 benefits from the inclusion of AR or augmented reality, displaying on-screen overlays to assist with home point identification and return to home functions. With show AR home point options on, you will see a virtual H on the live view screen representing the Air 3 home point, which can be seen in all the map views. With the Show AR Return to Home route option enabled, there's a green path showing what route the Air 3 will take to RTH. Lastly, when landing, there is also a virtual Air 3 on screen showing where the Air 3 will exactly land. This is called Show AR Aircraft Shadow. Now moving on to the Flight Protection section. This is used to define how far and high the Air 3 will fly at any given time. Now, although our intention may be to stay within the confines of the law, when in flight, this might be difficult to maintain. Max altitude. If you're in the United States, because it's illegal to fly above 400 feet, you may choose to set the max altitude to anything under 400 feet. If you're in a country that regulates the maximum altitude that you can fly, Likewise, you'll want to set that number here. The next option is max distance. Additionally, you can set the maximum distance of the Air 3. If you're concerned about flying too far out, you could set the value to any number you'd like. If distance isn't a concern, this can be set to no limit. Now here's a very important area to consider, advanced safety settings. These determine how the Air 3 behaves when the Air 3 disconnects from the remote controller. Now, disconnects can occur due to variants in the environment, such as tall trees, mountains, canyons, or uh, signal interference and loss when flying in downtown areas. We'll look at signal loss. Signal loss options are as follows. RTH. Here, the Air 3 will return to the home point regardless of the surroundings. Land. The Air 3 will descend and land even if the signal was lost over water. 
hover, the Air 3 will stay in one place until it receives input from you. You may have to go to the location of the Air 3 to regain a connection though. Well that's all for this video. If you have specific questions about this or our other videos, we'd love for you to join us at DronePilots.com. For more tutorials and reviews, head to DroneBlog.com.